Tonight's game, live from the Silver Dome, the Birmingham Stadions play the Michigan Panthers. Let's take a look now at the starting lineups for both these fine teams. First of all, for the Michigan Panthers on offense, the offensive line will be Penny, Dornbrook, Radloff, Tyrone McGriff, and Chris Godfrey. The receivers, Derek Holloway and Anthony Carter, the tight end, will be Mike Cobb. And in the backfield, it'll be John Williams starting in place of Cleo Miller tonight, Bobby Abair, the quarterback, Kenny Lacey at fullback. For the Birmingham Stallions on defense, the front three, Mike Raines, Jimmy Walker, and Jackie Klein. The linebackers will be Herb Spencer, Larry McPherson, Rick D'Amico, and Dallas Hickman. The defensive secondary will be Michael Thomas, Billy Caesar, Frank Reed, and Eric Thompson. The Birmingham Stallions offensive line, Pat Phoenix, Mark Battaglia, center Tom Banks, Buddy Adelette will be a left guard, Robert Woods at left tackle. On the receiving core, we'll find Jim Smith, the former Pittsburgh Steeler, Greg Anderson, the other wide receiver, and Daryl Mason will be the tight end. In the offensive backfield, Earl Gamm and Kenny Talton, the running backs, the quarterback number 12, Bob Lane. Michigan Panther defense, which leads the USFL in sacks, defensive line, Alan Hughes, David Tipton, and Ronnie Paget. The linebackers, Kyle Borland, Robert Pennywell, Dan Lloyd, the former Giant, and John Corker, who leads the league in sacks on an individual basis. The defensive secondary, Fred Logan, John Arnold, David Greenwood, and Clarence Chapman. Now let's go live to the Silverdome in Detroit and Jim Simpson. Thank you, Tom Meese. The Pontiac Silverdome welcomes ESPN. And on behalf of ESPN, we are thrilled to be here for this game. Birmingham on the four-game winning streak against the host Michigan team, which has won six in a row. Raleigh Dodge of Birmingham knows that back home they're all fired up and his team is ready to go. And they're looking forward to a big game tonight. Jim Stanley, a much quieter man, says the same thing in a different tone of voice. In other words, he barely raises his voice. Michigan has won the toss and will receive. And so Scott Norwood, who a couple of weeks ago kicked five field goals against New Jersey, will kick off. And the man in the middle is Jerome Stelly, a newcomer, a rookie out of Western Illinois, just signed today. Number 38, Jerome Stelly will receive the kickoff. The surprise here, they do not have a big crowd, less of a crowd than they had a week ago. They're expecting between 20 and 25,000. Norwood to kick off, and Skelly, first time in the USFL, will handle this in the end zone and will bring it out. The 10, and hit down before he gets to the 15-yard line. Tackle made there by number 55, who is Herb Spencer, a linebacker. And so it'll be first and 10, and the market just over the 13. Jim, we thought about it. It's going to be a hitting ball game, and we saw that Herb Spencer right on the opening kickoff. And I expect that to be that way, the intensity in this ball game through the entire football game. Bobby Abair coming in out of Northwest Louisiana State, a rookie. The opposing quarterback tonight for Birmingham is Bob Lane out of Northeast Louisiana. Holloway comes wide to the left. Anthony Carter goes to the right. Winning streaks are on the line, and John Williams, the rookie out of Wisconsin, has the football, cuts it upfield, gets across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. A gain of eight. It'll be second down and one. Emmanuel Thompson, the left cornerback, number 20, came over to make the tackle. You know, Jim, we talked about the offensive guards a week ago. Tyrone McGriff, number 61. He's pulling, and he says he loves to do this to get to the outside, and he does. He gets an excellent block on Frank Reed. <laughs> Frank Reed gets spun around. He's the strong safety. I like what he says. I like to go out and search for people. Holloway goes to the right this time, and Carter comes to the left. Second down and a long yard to go. Offenses are similar, remember. And there is Lacey, and Lacey's got the first down and more. Across the 30-yard line. Raleigh Docks of Birmingham was paying tribute to the offensive line tonight of the Michigan Panthers, and why not? He used to coach Ray Pitty, Tom Tornbrook, and Tyrone McGriff back with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And here's one of the men you're talking about, Tornbrook, number 63. He's going to get back to the outside, and he gets his block on number 50, Larry McPherson. All at the 32-yard line. It is a first down. All right, here comes Tornbrook again. He's the right guard. He's just pulling out and sealing off the inside linebacker and holding. A Bear has not thrown the ball yet. Why not? He's picked up the first down. Going to run it again. John Williams takes quite a hit as he hit the line of scrimmage. Looked like Jackie Klein was the first man to hit him before Mike Raines put him down. But Klein, number 98, hit him. Raines, number 79, put him down. John Williams scored the winning touchdown a week ago against New Jersey when Birmingham, I should say Michigan, was down 17-3 at the half and came back to win. 21 unanswered points in the third period. Jim 
Jimmy Walker, the, the nose tackle for Birmingham, number 75, is lining up off the ball. His job this evening is to take the last back in the backfield. Now he is up on the line. The two defensive ends, Klein and, and Reigns, are on off the ball. Second down, six to go. The first pass is right for Anthony Carter. Driven back, he may have the first down. Hit immediately by Amuel Thompson, but Carter may have picked up the first down. If he missed it, it's by about the length of the football or less. Carter last week, as Tom Meese told you, five catches for 102 yards against New Jersey. But the man on the other side of the line of scrimmage, Jim Smith, last week, had nine catches for 189 yards. And the mark of the ball, it is a first down. Ball at the 42-yard line of Michigan. They took the ball at the 13-yard line, now have it at their own 42. I hope to see the cornermen, Emil Thompson and Michael Thomas, both play up close on Holloway, number 29, and Anthony Carter, number one. You just cannot give them a lot of room to maneuver. Holloway left, Carter to the right. John Williams, fine tackle going down the line of scrimmage. Number 28, who is Frank Reed, the veteran strong safety out of the University of Washington. While we have a chance here, Paul, we might as well say that the man in the booth next to us by the name of Craig Morton, who used to quarterback the Denver team, took him over to the Super Bowl, it is said will be the next head coach of Denver, the Denver Gold, who have lost five in a row. We talked to Craig tonight. He said, he's thinking about it. He's talking about it. And I said, what about Mrs. Morton? She said, she says it's okay. That's but that's the key. all we know. That's the key. That's all we know. Second down, nine to go. But Craig Morton may be, whoops, jumping offside the tight end. And that is Mike Cobb. Now, you see Mike Cobb, and people wonder, you know, the tight end can move. But the thing about it is he can only move laterally along the line of scrimmage. He can get up and move along the line of scrimmage, but once he comes forward, then he's in motion. Our referee tonight. Tight end on the offense. That's Tom White. His umpire is Tony Kramer. Jack Pitkus, the head linesman. The line judge is L.T. Bonner. Jim Mullendore, the back judge. The field judge is Ben Pope. That is Jim Stanley, the coach. Craig Morton. You might ask, why Craig Morton the head coach of Denver? Well, the firing of Fred Miller, they tell us out in Denver land, was very unpopular. They had 9,000 no-shows. And Morton is a hero in Denver professional football. Be a good public relations move, and who knows, Craig might turn out to be an outstanding coach. He doesn't know that yet himself. Second down, 14. The ball over the middle. To Mike Cobb, who just jumped offside. The ball is across the 45 to the 46. Frank Reed, the strong safety, again makes the stop. Just a little bit more about Morton, though, Jim. And Morton has always been a, a competitor, and I think... Before he would take that team, Craig Morton's going to want to be assured that the owner wants a winner. He knows he does, and that means the same problem that Red Miller had. Will they go out and get the players to win? That's to be answered. Third down, seven to go, passing situation. No score. Michigan's have the ball the entire, well, the first five minutes of this game. Hey, Bear. Across the middle has Cobb. He's got the first down. Drag down. But... That was Moriarty, or rather Mike Hatchett, who made the stop, but Cobb pays for the sin of having jumped offside by making the first down catch. The ball inside the 44 now of Birmingham. That was Mike Hatchett, who is the nickel back, the fifth defensive back, number 42, that makes the tackle on Cobb. And we're seeing more and more throwing the ball to the tight ends as the, as the year progressed. There's Hatchett. He just wasn't close enough to Cobb, and Cobb drags him for two more yards. Drive started at the 13. And the first quarter is now five minutes exactly old. Both wide receivers to the same side. Now Carter starts in motion. That is John Williams. Fine play there. Herb Spencer came on in a hurry. Number 55. He is the leading tackler, and he adds to his total there. Spencer, out of Newberry, a rookie, plays the outside linebacker on the left side. Herb Spencer that time, just outstanding pursuit. He is, was the outside linebacker on that side. The corner came up and forced very well, and that was Michael Thomas. But when you have that, and you take down the guard like Tyrone McGriff coming out, that leaves an opening for the linebacker to make the tackle, and Spencer did it. Los Angeles Express got 36 yards on the ground total 
last week against this Birmingham team. And Michigan has already surpassed that. And here goes Williams for more down to about the 40-yard line. And Mike Raines, number 79, getting up from making the tackle, along with Larry McPherson, number 50, the inside linebacker. Third down, long yardage again. Last time they went to the tight end, Mike Cobb, right over the middle. And as Paul said, Mike Hatchett, the nickelback, was laying five to seven yards off him as he came off the line of scrimmage. Now Potter right, all the way left. Excuse me, Jim, now that Birmingham, they're not going to a nickelback. They're staying in their, in their basic 3-4 defense, but their linebackers are getting up in the line of scrimmage. Hey, Bear, the blitz is on. Gets the ball away and almost intercepted. A fine play across the way, almost made by Frank Reed. They were throwing the ball downfield for Mike Cobb, and it's Reed who dove in front. And now there will become a kick as Rick Partridge, third-year man out of Utah, comes on the field. There is his average, a little bit more than 40 and a half yards. And there is Ron Frederick going deep, number 82. Partridge standing on his own 44. They do not have the rush on. It's a fake. Partridge gets the ball away. That's why they didn't have the rush on. And it is thrown to Reed. He's got the first down and more. Check that. That's Lacey. And a flag is down. Hold it. They did not have the rush on. And they might have been suspecting something. And Michigan is walking back. Partridge throws to Lacey. And there's a legal block. Partridge better stay out there because he's going to have to punt now. He may have been hurt. He's walking around shaking that right arm. Well, Jim, he's going to get drilled at the end of this. Now, he fakes it to the up back, and he goes out and throws the ball. <laughs> but then look what happens. The price you pay. Now he knows what the quarterbacks go through. He did get the ball to Lacey. You're going to see the fake coming back to the outside. Illegal nice block. Fake. Everything the was there. The he's back. got Lacey number, number 28 in the screen, on the and they've got blocking, Fourth and then down. Partridge just goes down. Again, the price you have to pay. Now he knows he can sympathize with quarterback. Jim Stanley. Well, we were looking for something different tonight. Mark one up for Stanley and company. A fake punt. He's the first one. Now they've got 10 men up front. Partridge standing inside his own 35. get that many guys in that small a space. Four, three, two, now they snap it. High heading for the end zone. Birmingham hopes it is in the end zone. 8.02 to go, no score. Back to the Silver Dome in a moment. The Birmingham coaching staff upstairs has called down the play that they think should be run on third down and three to go from a 39. And it's a fake, and Lane has plenty of room to make it, and now they're closing him down, but he's got it. Inside the 35. Corker makes the stop. By the way, Paul and I will be picking the men and MVP at the end of this game. Long way to go, Paul. The winning player will receive $1,000 to be donated to the college university of his choice. We have checked on John Arnott. There is nothing wrong with him at all. They're simply playing Logan and Osborne and Greenwood and Chapman and Arnott, who has had such a good spot there at free safety has given way to Logan who's taken over at free safety. Nope, they put Osborne back at free safety. Strange. First down, ball at the 34-yard line, no score. Lane to throw, has Smith high in the air. Smith took a belt, the ball off his hands, and it's second down. And that was Clarence Chapman who almost had an interception covering Smith moments ago that let him have it. Lane is just a little bit too tentative, Jim. He's late with the ball getting there because Smith again was open, but the ball is late getting there. Let me tell you something. You said the same thing about Bear earlier, and when you said as we came on the air and we came upstairs from the field, there's a lot of tension out there. One team with a six-game winning streak, the other team with a four-game winning streak. A missed play tonight, and they could be out of any chance for playoff. Exactly. You can't be too tentative. Second down, 10. Lane puts the ball up. Nobody can get to it. Intended for Smith, Chapman back there, but overthrown everybody. 
And it's third down. Lane went down. Hughes and Corker, number 98 Hughes, number 57 Corker, hit him just as he threw the ball. Clarence Chapman had excellent coverage on Jim Smith. No one has come close to scoring tonight. It has been a game played between the 30-yard line. Michigan was moving when there was a mix-up between John Williams and Bobby Hebert, and the ball scored it loose, and Billy Caesar picked it up. One of those backs coming out of the backfield. Smith, the man in motion, flips his arm, laying back, and out here is Gant. Gant's going to get the first down and more. Gant went out of bounds inside the 15. Down to the 10. Greenwood, number 31, and Arnott back in the ball game, or in the ball game for the first time, helped make the stop. I just said to you, Jim, throw to one of those backs coming out of the backfield, and that's Gant. The blitz was on. They picked up everyone. That offensive line did a spectacular job. Everybody goes down. Lane has time. The blitzing linebackers are there. Corker can't get to him, and then here comes Gant out of the backfield, and no one is on it. Here's Clarence Chapman trying to catch up. David Greenwood's over there, number 31, to make the stop. From third and 10 to first and 10 at the 10. There is Tolden. Look out. Inside the five goes Ken Tolden. Down to the three. Corker in on the tackle. Pennywell in on the stop. And Ronnie Padgett. But it is second down from a three. Adelaide again. I keep mentioning his name. I'll be saying it all night long. Watch number 78. He gets out and gets his block on the linebacker on the outside. And they just keep right on moving. Linebacker got the block on was Dan Lloyd, the former New York Giant at Washington Federal, who had that heroic battle against cancer and has come back to play football. Time has been called. 13.31 to go. First half. No score, but it is Birmingham that is three yards from a score. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, we are live from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. One time site of a Super Bowl. It is second down from the three. No score. Raleigh Dodge now has Kent Tolton out of the game. It is Quarrel and Gant. Kabinsky in motion. Here's Gant who caught the football and took it to the 10. Knocked down at the three again. Line of scrimmage, third down. David Greenwood, number 31, led the way. You can see Logan getting up. And the last man to get up looks to be Alan Hughes, number 98. Got his third down from the three. Jim Cornelius Quarles is in the backfield, number 40, and he's supposed to block for Gant. Take a look at it. He can't find anybody. The block, he gets mixed up, trips over his own man, and Gant gets hammered. And Quarles is going out of the game. <laughs> I think so. Denny White has come back in. Tolton has come in. Third down three. Straight ahead is Tolton. And now comes a big decision. Do they go for the obvious three or do they go all the way? They go for the obvious three. When you're in a game that's this tight, playing strong defense against strong offense. Nobody's I... made a move from the sideline yet. Raleigh Dodge. He's got a man that holds the USFL record with five field goals. Norwood is walking back toward the bench. He's not coming out on the field. So Dodge is going to pull out the big gamble, a yard and a half to go. You become a hero or whoops. <laughs> well, he obviously believes that three points is not going to be enough against Michigan. And he got to have, and if Michigan stops him, what a lift it's going to give this football team. A little swing pass, touchdown, and standing right there with it is Stevens, a tight end. Lane rolled out as if to run the ball as he has on several occasions, throws the yard pass to Steve Stevens, who makes his first touchdown catch of the year. Jim, Bob Lane could have scored on his own. Everybody jammed to the inside. They figured they're going to go to the inside. Buddy Adelette gets on the outside. He's got, he's got the block. You can see that Bob Lane could just move in if he wanted to. Number 24, Fred Logan was there, but you have the big man on him. Either way. Now Scott Norwood, who is 21 out of 22. They'll attempt to make it 7 nothing. And Norwood's cook is perfect. 
Second quarter, Birmingham leads by seven. Second turnover for Michigan. The fumble picked up by Caesar and this interception by McPherson. Take a look at what I'm going to call him now. Big hands, McPherson. Watch him get up in the air and get the ball. He's got big gloves on. McPherson makes the interception. Jim, if he gets a, a block on the outside, he can go all the way. Dallas Hickman, the linebacker, number 57, turned to the inside instead of looking outside. Lane looking for a quick one. Puts the ball up, has his man over there, and rolling ahead is Smith. And that is his third catch of the night. And he's got a first down, I do believe, inside the 25-yard line. Clarence Chapman is having his troubles with Smith tonight. There's McPherson, the man who made the interception. And let's check on one thing for Larry. That's interception number two for the year. That time, Bob Lane was not looking at Jim Smith. And that's what you call a last-minute decision. He just flipped it out to Smith, and the Smith came back and adjusted to the quarterback. This ball game for Michigan... They came back from being down 17 to three at halftime against New Jersey, but if they get down big here, it could be trouble. And Calden gets inside the 20-yard line to the 18-yard line. Pennywell, number 59, the man who made the stop. I talked a couple of weeks ago about the offensive backs, and Calden is, ex is an example of it. They have confidence in the offensive line. Watch him explode into the hole. They believe that the holes are going to be there because they've been there most of the year. 7-0, Birmingham, 10.35 to go. Raleigh Dutch still looks very relaxed. Was he relaxed before the game? Oh, my. <laughs> when he was in that losing streak, I said, I knew that he could sing Irish songs, and then when he began to win, I said, but he can also coach. <laughs> and off to Talton. Talton goes for the first down inside the 15-yard line. And uh, let's see whether or not he made it. He's going to be short about six inches. John Banizak, the former Steeler, made the stop. He did not make it. It's third down and short. This has been quite a ball game. Remember, Michigan trailing 7-0 and facing a third and one by Birmingham has won six in a row. And Birmingham has won four in a row. But at the top of the Central Division standings, Tampa Bay has won nine out of 12, despite having lost their top two quarterbacks. Third and one. And Lane takes it himself. First down. That's what you have. When you have a quality quarterback like Bob Lane, that can run the football. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The safest play on third and inches, or fourth and inches, or any down with inches to go, is the quarterback. Jim Stanley's group has turned the ball over twice, and that has been the big problem. There goes Talden. Talden written down on a fine play by Pennywell with a little help from Dan Lloyd. Pennywell has been on a bundle of tackles tonight. Talden gets the ball down to the 12-yard line. And it is second down and eight to go. When Birmingham kicked off to Michigan, the way the Panthers moved the football, you thought, oh, oh it's going to be a long night for the Stallions. But the Panthers have stopped themselves, and thus far, this Birmingham has been able to take advantage of one of the turnovers, and now they're trying to take advantage of the second. Lane's going to run the ball. Adelaide in front of him. Lane gets down near the five-yard line before Clarence Chapman comes up to make the stop. Along with Mike Edwards, who apparently is playing that left outside linebacker spot because Borden is not in there. Here's a tight end, Steve Stevens. Now take a look at him. He's going to get a block. There's a double team block with Phoenix right there on the defensive end. They just blow him right off the line of scrimmage. When you do that, that's John Banizak. You can move the football. Here comes Lane. He gets a great block. And Lett is out. He's the guy to block number 53, Mike Edwards. And now it's third down and about. Two and a half. Lane looking throws and it is almost intercepted by Pennywell. Pennywell is there again but did not get the big interception. It's fourth down. Here comes Norwood. Jim Pat Sainton, the guard, is in the game. They alternate their guards, but Pat Sainton, number 60 or 74, was running out. Excuse, yeah, 74 was running out to the outside. 
and he looked back at Lane like, why did you run the ball? All we had was one linebacker there. We could have, I could have blocked him, had him on the ground, and we could have been going. Norwood now will try a 23-yard field goal, and if he makes it, chalk this up to the turnover, the interception by McPherson. 23 yards out, it is good. 7.28 to go, second quarter, 10-0, the Stadions lead. You know, Paul, when I take a look at that page there, what I look at is at the bottom, and thank goodness, Raymond Chester was not as seriously hurt as it looked when he got belted in the head the other day. I, you know, I know that it's a great thing to lead the league in receiving, but a man like Chester or any person, I'm just so glad that it's only a sprained neck and nothing more serious than that. Yeah, but it just scares me. I've been around football too long, and when I see him strap the guy onto the stretcher like that, and I, I, I agree with you, I, it's just so thankful. Raymond Chester is such a credit to the game. Rome Stelly, the man is deep. Norwood had just kicked the 23-yard field goal. will kick off last time. He had a short kick. This time he gets a little bit more into it. Stelly at the two. Ten. Trying to get outside and makes it to about the 20-yard line. And no more. Tackle made across there by Freddie Smith again. Eight plays, 29 yards with a 23-yard field goal. That after the interception by McPherson. And now Bobby Abear and company will try not to bump into each other or throw the ball into the hands of a linebacker and get something going again. They're down by 10. 10 to nothing, 7-18 to go in the half. Well, we said we have two offenses that run the same offense. There was the last meeting. That was our first game. That was Boyevich's game. His three point right. yarders. That's right. But Birmingham has changed their offense somewhat to see if uh, Michigan does the same. I'll give you a trivia question in a moment, Paul, about that first game. Oh, looks like uh, Abel was in trouble again. Gets it up high, looking for Anthony Carter. Hangs it up there. Look out. Ball is good. Touchdown. Carter picks it out of the air. 80 yards. That took 21 seconds to get it all back, including the kick return. Anthony Carter, Billy Caesar's back there, number 44. Abear runs a play action pass. And I tell you what, the man can throw the football. He has let it go. Abear steps up and fires the ball. He sees Anthony running down. Now watch 44. Billy Caesar is there. Thompson's there. It goes off. A, a, it looked like Thompson, Thompson's hands. And Anthony Carter has tremendous concentration, very soft hands, caught it. And Boyevich comes in to add the extra point, and just like that, it is 10-7. Birmingham leads. back in a moment. And six to go, and whoop, boy, what a play made by John Corker there on Ken Tolton. Number 57 just wrapped him around as Tolton was heading for the line of scrimmage. It's third down and long. John Corker just runs through number 81, Daryl Mason, the tight end, never makes the block, and he comes right down the line of scrimmage and tackles Colton. That's outstanding defensive play by the linebacker. And that's the one thing that Birmingham had a lot of their offense designed for tonight, not let that man do them any damage at all. And no one could handle it. Like the old X's and O's, it depends on who's the X and who's the O. Yes, and what they're doing with it. Third down. Clock running, 1.20 to go in the first half. Third and six. Lane looking, Lane throwing, and it is over everybody. A little mix-up there. The man nearest to it is Greg Anderson, but it's fourth down, and they'll have to kick the ball back to Michigan. Bollinger came on. Did not have the great punt last time, Paul, and as a man who led the league in punting one time, he can say why, even though it's 51 yards or 52 yards, he's not been punting that well. And he's a little slow kicking the ball. They just snapped it real quick. Gets a better kick here, and Carter's back at the fifth. Oh, he's up the football, and it's going to belong to number 33, Lonnie Johnson. Lonnie Johnson has it. There's a third turnover of the night. Carter, the hero on the 81-yard catch, dropped the punt, and at inside the 20, at the 17. You know the amazing thing? You and I were watching him before the game. We're talking about his soft hands and the great concentration of Anthony Carter with the ball. And that time, he just took his eye off the ball, Birmingham lined up, didn't have anybody down in a position. They just snapped the ball on the first sound, and they got the ball off. But watch Anthony Carter. He's, he's looking downfield. He drops the ball, 
And Lonnie Johnson is right there at number 33 to pick it up. Chance for Norwood at least if you don't get a touchdown here. Lane swings it out, throws it for Gant. Gant inside the 15 and rolls out and stops the clock at the 10 yard line. David Greenwood, number 31, made the stop. But that's the third turnover. Caesar has recovered a fumble. McPherson has intercepted a pass. And now Carter drops a punt. And on two, the first two turnovers, Birmingham came away with 10 points. Now they're in a position. There's Anthony Carter with his head inside of his jersey. He was a hero just about four or five minutes ago and you turn from hero to ghost especially when no one hit him or put the hand in to get him away he simply as you said took his eye off the ball so seldom happens but it happened to Anthony Carter second down Billy White with the football looking for first down territory and got it and that will stop the clock while he moved the sticks Andy Vino Andy Canavino made the stop Bob Lane looking to Raleigh Dotson coming to the sidelines to get his play. 10 to 7 the score, 56 seconds in the half at Birmingham, and everybody will need all the points they can get. This second half is going to be a pip. Birmingham looking to score again. Remember what they did a week ago, Bur or, or, uh, Michigan. Down they 17 to 3. They came out and scored 21 unanswered points in the third quarter. But this is four down situation. With the running, the line that they have at Birmingham, go for it. Calden. Does not get too far. Down to about the five. They call time with 38 seconds to go. And now Lane is not looking to the sidelines. He is going to the sidelines to talk this over. They only have one timeout left. They used one earlier in the game. Now Bob Lane is going to go over and talk to Raleigh Dodge. While he does, once they get out of this tonight, win or lose, the Stallions have to fly immediately to Denver and play on Friday night. That's right. You fly on Tuesday. You got Wednesday, Thursday there. You play Friday night. ESPN will be there, Tom Kelly, Don Heinrich, and that'll be the Denver gold against these Birmingham Stadiums who are trying to make it five in a row tonight to stay in the race for the playoff. Raleigh Dodge is talking with his quarterback, and we'll say again, since Birmingham is going to play Denver, the rumor, if you did not hear us say it, and Craig Morton has confirmed it. He's been offered the job as head coach of the Denver gold of the USFL. He has not yet accepted the job. He's talking conditions and contract and what the future of the team is. He'll accept it tomorrow. You think so? My prediction. Tomorrow <laughs> he will accept the job. Now, we but, were laughing and we said to you earlier that in talking about it, and the phones were ringing in the broadcast booth over there and the reporters here in the Silverdome were going to him. And Paul and I are standing there and our question was, what does Mrs. Morton think? He said, he said she thinks it's okay. And that we came away saying he's going to accept. Jim, and that is the most important question I think it had to be asked of Craig Morton. And you asked him that. What, does your wife like it? She does. They like Denver. He liked to the coach here, but he'd also like to coach a winner. Second down from the five-yard line. Lane hit in the backfield, looking to throw. Smith is there, flagged down. Interference in the end zone on Fred Logan, number 24. Interference in the end zone. And now they're waving it off. I don't know whether they're waving off the flag, which you can see in the end zone, or what. But it was. Nope, they're not waving it off. Oh, it's offensive on Smith. He pushed off Logan. That's the call. They can't wave it off. Not when you have two flags down there. Smith, half smile on his face. And they're going to mark it off, taking it out to the 15-yard line. Logan not on Smith. Smith on Logan. Pass interference on the offense. Number 86. Also loss of down. Third down. Let's see if we can see what happened here. You caught it, Paul. Well, first of all, John Corker almost has Bob Lane. You're going to bootleg to his side. Corker was there. Now, we can't see. That's Greenwood coming up. It's, it's a little bit late to see what happened. It was almost intercepted, but they called Smith. Now back live, and there's the throw. And Greg Anderson says, I've got the touchdown, and he does. And a flag is down at the 19-yard line, but this one is against Michigan. Personal foul, late hit, number 52 on the defense. Touchdown counts. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Kyle Borland back into the ball game on the left side, and he draws it. Clarence Chapman gets beat here. And the man that beats him is Anderson, number 83. We might see the roughing the passer here, too, on top of it. That's John Corker. He's the man that hits him. Look at Anderson. Goes down to the ball, cradles it. Excuse me. I said... I said 
that it was Chapman, it was Fred Logan, number 24. Right, and you said it was Corker that did the roughing because they called 52 ball and that we didn't see in the ball game. But in any event, here is Norwood in to add the extra point. And he has done so, and the score is now 17 to 7 if this flag doesn't take away the extra point. No, it won't. I, I, you must have roughing the kicker because Scott Norwood went down. No, no delay, of the game. delay of the game. Now, it is very simple to see what has happened to Michigan and how the stadiums have capitalized. There have been two fumbles and one interception and all have led to the 17 points on the board now for Birmingham. And now, if you don't think Anthony Carter felt bad before, he really feels badly now. He must. Here goes Bob Lane. He's going to go back and he, he's looking for Anderson all the way. And he's got him on Fred Logan, number 24, Anderson, number 83. But watch how he goes down for the ball, Jim, to protect the ball from the defender. He's right there, rolls into the end zone, touchdown. And for Anderson, his second touchdown of the year. The Michigan team has come to the sideline. They're not on the field. There is Carter. Jim, they've got to move the ball to the 50-yard line because of the um, the roughing the passer penalty against Corker. Well, let's see. They're taking it back to the 35. They said it'd be assessed on the kickoff. Norwood is standing there at the 35, and now they're holding the ball, roughing the passer, and so now they'll walk it off. Try to fake us out, didn't they? <laughs> Jerome Stelly goes deep. Well, the Panthers have won six in a row. Have made the three turnovers. The Stallions, it is very simple. They have not committed the turnover. Then another flag, another five-yard penalty. So they tack that on. So it's a 20-yard penalty. Jim, you know, there's only 27 seconds left to go. Michigan does have three timeouts. If there was ever a time that you want it, you know, you're up. Well, you're up. So, I, you know, by 10 points, try an onside kick. Gamble, Raleigh Dutch went for it on fourth down. Why not try an onside kick here? Well, I tell you, they kind of think that he might try something. You see Stelly back there, but he's the only one within the 20-yard line. Now a couple more fade back. Lane is 10 of 16 for 113 yards and two touchdowns and no interceptions. Michigan, well, Norwich is going to kick this out of the ballpark. Michigan's got to hope that lightning strikes twice. Now, remember, the only seven that Michigan has on the 81-yard catch by Carter after the ball bounced off a couple of defenders, most notably Caesar, the strong safety of Birmingham. So the Panthers, outside that initial march, really have not marched that hard. They did have another march put together before Abair and Williams collided and Caesar recovered the fumble. So remember last week, sitting right in this stadium, they were down Michigan 17 to three. They are now down 17 to seven, came back in 21 answer points, but that's not the same type of defense that they were playing against either. That's the general's defense as opposed to the stallion's defense. Hey Bear, hand off Lacey and Lacey takes it down with the clock running and it all depends on whether or not they call timeout. They may be willing just to get out of here. They don't have to get another play off. They're going to let it run out, I do believe. So the three turnovers have led to 17 points. Carter made the one great catch of 81 yards but also the fumble. Five seconds to go. A Bear in no hurry at all. Three, two, one. He's going to get one off. But he's going to hand it to his fullback, Lacey. And Lacey bursts into the secondary. And that's the end of the half. End of the half. Story is thus far the turnovers. Birmingham wins the first half at least 17 to 7. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Mees. We're at halftime of our Monday night USFL game for the Pontiac Silverdome. And the Michigan Panthers and their fans have to be asking themselves, haven't we been in this predicament before? Yes, last week Michigan trailed 17-3 at half. This week they trail 17-7. Let's look at the stats now and get a clue why Birmingham is up by a count of 17-7. All right, passing 9 for 16, 5 for 6 for Michigan. Yards passing about the same, yards rushing about the same, total yardage about the same. But number of plays, Birmingham has... A big two to one advantage, 43 to 22. They have three more first downs, but the most important stat, the three turnovers committed by Michigan, they've led to all 17 of the Birmingham points. And look at the time of possession, because Birmingham has controlled the football for double the amount of plays that Michigan has. They've also controlled the time of possession, 1811 to 1149. The Michigan Panthers have to cut down on their turnovers. They have to play a little bit more ball control and get the ball in the hands of Anthony Carter, their big play man. 17 to seven, our halftime score. Let's go back to the Silverdome and Jim Simpson. Thank you, Tom, along with Paul McGuire. Boyovich of Michigan will have to kick the ball off, which means the Panthers will have to wait a little while to get their hands on the football, barring the first turnover of the night 
by the Stallions. They have been playing letter perfect. Lonnie Johnson, who has recovered the Carter fumble, is the man who is deep. And it is Billy White who picks it up instead. White gets across the 15 and now gets across the 20. And it's Chapman that's going to run him out of bounds at the 29-yard line. And Michigan, Lane, will bring them out again. Well, Birmingham, their first possession, they failed, okay? Then the next possession, that was after a turnover, a touchdown. Field goal after another turnover. Then they punted twice. Michigan's got their defense back together again. And then, again, another turnover, Jim. And another touchdown. That's their 17 points. Michigan, on the other hand, again, it's the whole key to that first half. Three turnovers. Jim Smith wide to the left. Lane from the 29-yard line. Birmingham leading 17-7. to There's Gant. He had a good first half and has a good run here. And may have enough for the first down. David Greenwood and Ron Osborne, numbers 31 and 23, make the tackle, but Gant's got the first down. Looked like almost like a delay, but it wasn't. Gant is trying to find a hold, but he had let go through, gets a block, and the blocking in the offensive line just took up where they left off in the first half. Repeat, Michigan working on a six-game winning streak, Birmingham on a four-game winning streak, a loss by either could be devastating. Tonight or any time between now and the end of the season as far as making the playoffs are concerned. Billy White does not get too far, does he? About a yard, and that's all. And it'll be second down and nine as he nudges the ball across the 40-yard line of Birmingham. Alan Hughes, number 98, in on the tackle. Raleigh Dots, the head coach of Birmingham, relaxed, but he cannot... He looks relaxed, at least. He cannot relax with the Panthers. They are a good ball club. Birmingham has come alive with their team. After all, they lost to Michigan in the opener, 9-7, to seven, and Boyevich's three field goals. Took them a little while to get going, but now they do lose those four in a row. Up and down, here goes Gant again. Gant turns it up and gets good yardage again. That's Corker up top holding on, number 57. But Gant picks up another seven or eight yards. That will be third down and short. I mentioned in the first half, the, the, the confidence that the backs have in their offensive line. Look at Gann. No hesitation. He's just going down the line of scrimmage. Cuts back to the inside. Pat Phoenix, number 71, gets an excellent block for him. John Corker comes over to make the tackle, but Gant picked up nine yards. They are number one in the USFL in rushing, and as we were told today, they're a tight little ball game. A tight little group, these running backs to the stadium. They like one another, and they play for each other. And is replacement for each other. There's Talton picking up the first down across midfield to the 49-yard line. And Raleigh Dobbs has brought his team out, and Bobby Lane is moving the ball on the ground. And after the good 27-yard return by Billy White to the 29, they move the ball now to the 49 of Michigan. Now it's a play action pass because Birmingham runs most everything off of play action because they run the ball so well. And what that does is freezes the linebackers, and you try to get those backs downfield if Corker is not uh, blitzing, and it gives Smith some time to make his move. 17-7 Birmingham. They've got a first down at the 49, and Lane is going to throw. That's the ball out to Gant, and Gant tries to step away and steps around the first down marker and gets the first down. That's a nifty little two-step he did there to go around the marker and out of bounds. Well, I said play action passes. They hold the linebackers. But watch the move Gant makes at the end of this. This is beautiful. He's going to be tackled by Greenwood, number 31, two yards short of the first down. And watch him get the first down. Now he keeps in bounds, and he's going to dance around. Even though he's holding him by the arm, he dances <laughs> around the first down marker, picks it up. Ball at the 38-yard line. There's no Kelvin Bryant or Herschel Walker in that stat in backfield, but as a unit, they lead the league in rushing. And now the blitz is on, and Talton finds no place to go. They were blitzing on a running play. Alan Hughes, number 98, Ronnie Padgett, 99, will be getting up in a moment, helping one another up. They made the stop of Talton. You mentioned there's not a Herschel Walker out there, nor a Calvin Bryant brings me to mind that Birmingham has the rights to Buffalo's Joe Cribs, and they were talking with his, with his agent Argovitz, who has a piece of the Houston action for next year, and Argovitz says that he's, he'll be playing in Houston. Birmingham said, no way. No Joe Cribs will be here in Birmingham, Birmingham, if anywhere. Aside from Buffalo. That's right. Second down, at about 10 to go, and Tolton gets inside the 35-yard line. Pennywell, who had a great first half, Holding on. As a matter of fact, Pennywell had one opportunity to stop that last touchdown. Ball went in and out of his hands. Interception at the goal line was no good. 
Ball's on the 34-yard line now. Third down and six to go. 11-10 to go, third quarter. Jim Stanley, his club, used to be the head coach at Oklahoma State, Stanley. He's got quite a few Oklahoma State Cowboys playing for him here. Third and six. Frederick and Anderson left, Smith for the right. Lane looking, dumps it out, and that is Mason, the tight end, and he's got the first down. And this is perhaps the best drive we've seen engineered by either ball club tonight thus far. Michigan put to get one together at the very opening, only to fumble the ball away. Jim, and it comes with the confidence that you have in your offensive line because they can run the ball so very well, and it sets up everything else. Let me make one correction. I said they fumbled the ball away. That was on their second possession. The first, they tried the fake punt. They passed the ball and then had to punt the ball away. But that was their best block. First down and 10 inside the 30. Up, they lost the football, and Lane picks it up. Billy White dropped the football. That's Quarles instead of White that dropped the football, but Bob Lane just picked it up. Kind of said, hey, if you're going to vote for that men and MVP, look at me. Not only has he thrown for a couple of touchdowns, run well, if they made a saving, that would have been the first turnover. Heads up play by Bob Lane, and the, the only mistake that Birmingham has made in this drive, and they're going down now to, to almost five minutes in the drive, moving the ball very well. Now you go back, back to play action passes. You've got the three wide receivers and the tight end in the game. From the 29. Lane. And again, there's Mason, his tight end over there. And Mason is being bumped around and put down by Pennywell inside the 25-yard line. Can you believe that with a six-game winning streak? And I know that Detroit is a depressed area, and they've got nearly 20% unemployment in the city of Detroit, and about 15% in the state. And I know that there's several strikes going on, but six consecutive wins by Michigan, and the attendance tonight is 20,042. It's a shame because it has to hurt the players. I know they're getting paid to play the game, but they're performing so well. They started out poorly. They're performing so well, and they're doing it for themselves and for the fans and Detroit. And the support is not there. I thought after that week, last week, 32,000 because Herschel was here. And this game is so important that they'd have at least 40. Third and seven. The blitz is on. Lane is back. Dumps it out. Has his man. And there's Jim Smith again. Yet another catch. Greenwood hanging on. And that's going to be enough for the first down. Ball just by the 15-yard line. All right, Jim Smith is going to come down and across the middle. He's going to fake out, and he's got, he's going to have some coverage right there. And all of a sudden, Greenwood is there, number 31, to make the tackle. But Smith knows with the first down, and you've got to go back and give credit to the offensive line. They had a full-scale blitz on that time, and no one got close to Lane. Smith this time comes out to the left. Four receptions, 49 yards tonight. At nine for 189 last week. 17 to 7. The Stadions want more. Give it to Talton. Talton's in deep trouble. You can see Padgett up top putting him down along with Hughes. 99 to 98 again. 8.20 to go, third quarter. Norwood practicing on the far sidelines in case the Stadions don't put it in. Why do they call them the Stadions? Well, this team, the majority owner is Marvin Warner, former ambassador to Switzerland, who owns many, many thoroughbred horses. And therefore, if you think in that context, no wonder, being a horse lover as he is, he calls his team the Stout. They didn't have a contest. Second down and eight to go. And here is Quarles. Quarles breaks one tackle before Corker puts him down along with Canavino. 57 right there and getting up is Canavino. Now it is third down. And let's see, about three. All right, we talked about Buddy Adelette in the first half. And again, the second half, he has just taken up where he left off. Here he comes now. He's playing right guard and not left guard. He goes out on Edwards, number 53. Buddy Adelette, 78. Gets his block, knocks the linebacker to the outside, and Canavino comes in and makes the play. You know, maybe if you were not pointing that out to people, they would say, what changes did they make? Well, Adelette's moving all around on that offensive line. And here's Lane, back to throw, dumps it over and over the head of his intended receiver. And that is number 81, Darrell Mason, the tight end. 
And that's going to bring up fourth down, and that will bring out Scott Norwood, who already has a field goal tonight of 23 yards. And Birmingham ran two seconds shy of eight minutes off the clock. How about that? Took that opening kickoff return by White to the 29 and driven it down to the eight-yard line. And now this will be a 25-yard field goal attempt by Norwood. To make it 20 to 7 if he gets it. 25 yards. It is good. It is 20 to 7. Now back to the Silverdome after this. Birmingham with the football at their own 40-yard line. First and 10. They've got a 13-point lead, and Talton does not get very far. And Michigan is running out of time. They say they've recovered a fumble, and they have! Somewhere in that mix-up, Talton gets up. They are really furious with the official. Talton is still on the field talking to the official, saying they took it from me after I'm down. But it is Corker who comes up with the ball. And there's the first turnover, and Talton disputes it at the 41. Borland number 52 is back in the game also. That's good news for Michigan. All right, here's Talton up in the middle. There is a mix-up. Now we're going to try and find and see the ball. The ball is stripped away. It see? is a fumble. He does not have the ball going down. But he's got it under him. Nope, he doesn't. Corker's got it on, by his feet. So that is a correct call. Ball at the 41-yard line. Hebert and company, here's Lacey, got a man McGriff throwing a block in front of him, and Lacey runs out of bounds, inside the 35, and a flag goes down, out of bounds, and now it is Frank Reed saying, how can you throw that flag? But there's going to be a flag, and I think it's going to be against Reed and Birmingham. We talked about the guards. Watch number 61. Tyrone McGriff is going to get to the outside. He's going to get a block on number 50, McPherson. Here comes Tyrone. He's out in front of Lacey. There's the block on McPherson. He goes out. Now he's down. Who do they call the late hit on? Jim, where is there? Is no late hit. I'll tell you right now. now. Late hit out of bounds. I didn't number see it. Number 28 on the defense. But that's the man they called it on Reed, and that's why he was objecting. Jim Reed is on the ground. He can't hit him. He wasn't even near him. McPherson, number 50, is the only guy that was close. If we got it again. Maybe we can show it again after this play from the 18-yard line. Reed is furious, but the bottom line is Michigan's got the ball. First down at the 18. And there goes Lacey straight ahead. And by the way, this is by far and away the deepest they've been in the territory because the other score by Michigan was an 81-yard pass play from A. Bear to Carter. Now they've got the ball down on the 11. Let's go back to another guard. Yet we had McGriff on one side. There's Tom Dornbrook. He's going out on McPherson. McPherson's having a tough time with the guards. He fights off Dornbrook and makes the tackle. Second down and three to go. 20 to 7 Birmingham, but Michigan's got the football after the fumble. And there goes Lacey up the middle. Lacey driving inside the five. First down, goal to go. Spencer and McPherson trying to hold him back. McGriff, Radloff, and Dornbrook. There's a great block by McGriff. Dornbrook's downfield again on McPherson, number 50. And Lacey's got the first down inside the four. 1.45 to go and counting in the third quarter. Michigan trying to make the first turnover of Birmingham pay off for them as their three turnovers have paid off for Birmingham. Hey, Bear, that is John Williams. Williams down to about the one. And that is all. McPherson made the stop. The only thing that's happening in this drive, Jim, is that Michigan's running an awful lot of time off the clock. It's going to be down close to the end of the third period by the time they score. But if they get seven, they'd be within six and a whole quarter to go. the one and 
Williams. John Williams gets down just about to the one. It is third down. They don't want to come away with just three. 43 seconds to go. Herb Spencer, the leading tackler, made the stop of Williams. And also Rick D'Amico, number 53. Spencer, 55. D'Amico, 53. The two linebackers, they just fill in and do the job. There comes D'Amico in, helping his teammate, his other linebacker, Spencer, 55. And they stop him short of the goal line. And now Charles Martin comes in at nose tackle. Third and a yard. High formation. Second man, Williams jumps at his net at the line of scrimmage. And back he goes. It's fourth down and a yard to go. Four seconds to go. The clock is not yet run out. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, excited Michigan cheerleaders naturally because their team, one yard away, down 20 to 7 as we start the fourth quarter, have decided to go for the touchdown. They've got one yard to go. Last time, last play of the third quarter, John Williams was stopped as he tried to jump over. Quick pitch back, there goes Williams, touchdown, fumble the ball, but he is in the end zone. Once that ball goes across the line of the goal line, the stallions are wrong there because once the ball crosses the plane of the goal, that's it. He can fumble, throw the ball out of bounds if he wants. The officials have made a right call, and it's true. Once, once that ball touches the plane of the goal line, it is a touchdown. No dispute. We'll watch it from this side. Here comes Eccles, 88 in motion. He gets a block. Williams goes into the end zone. Now the ball has to cross the goal line. There it is. He's fumbled it into the end zone. Exactly. He's got a touchdown. And it is 20 to 13 with Boyovich to try to make it 20 to 14. All touchdowns, all scores tonight set up by turnovers. This one set up by Talton. Dropping the ball and Corker jumping on it. And Boyovich makes it 20 to 14 with almost a full quarter play left. Paul and I are sitting here thinking the scores you see, 20 to 14, are not going to stand up. Birmingham may still win. Michigan may come back, but we anticipate several more scores. This has got to open up. From a 32-yard line, first down Michigan after Norwood has missed the field goal. Here's Hebert, lifts his on by Spencer, no good, gets the ball for Holloway, and the ball is knocked away by Michael Thomas, and the flag goes down. And Thomas is beside himself. I think the call is, as he knocked the ball down with his right hand, his hand, left hand, might have been on the back of Holloway. You cannot touch the receiver, and remember, this is a 15-yard penalty. Michael Thomas, number 49, is the man that they called it. Uh, Abair's rolling to the outside. He's going to throw the ball back across the field. But you got to look at Michael Thomas's left hand. It's on his back. The right hand is there, but his left hand is on the back of Holloway, and that's what the call is, and it's a good call by the official. Pass interference, number 49 on the defense. First down. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down, no matter whether you need more than 15 yards to make the first down or not. Moves the ball to the 47-yard line. Carter comes to the left. Holloway goes to the right. 7-18 left in this game. Hebert fakes to Williams. Throws out here to Lacey out of the backfield. First down. Thompson makes the stop of Ken Lacey. And that's the first down inside the 45-yard line. And now Michigan, trailing by six, begins to come back. Lacey took quite a shot over there. Jim, again, I'm talking about the passes all night long, except for the long bomb to Anthony Carter. The ball was tipped and went off of his helmet. But both teams, if they will stay, and that's what Michigan's doing now, within that 10 to 15 yard pattern, because the cornermen, both Thompson and Thomas, are playing way off the wide receivers, giving them some room to run the shorter pattern. First down from the 42, Hebert throwing, gets the ball out there, and it is caught and out of bounds. Herb Spencer 
knocked Cleo Miller out of bounds. And that's the first time that Miller's caught a ball tonight. He has run the ball on several occasions. Veteran Cleveland Brown offensive back played sparingly. John Williams has taken that job away from him, starting in a running back situation. Again on the play, only a three. Second down and seven. The ball's at the 39. Jim Stanley and his group were trying to come from behind. Well, Birmingham has been blitzing on him almost every down, so now they're going with Williams and Cleo Miller in the backfield. Just to get it away for the clock. Oh, the ball is up for grabs. Carter was there, but number 75, Jimmy Walker, was great all over a bear and it was almost an interception that ball was thrown and that was the anthony carter that almost set it up with the ball but the ball was thrown to the left hand side to Derek holloway but jimmy walker hit a bear and the ball went completely right 6 20 left 20 to 14 birmingham three wide receivers holiday mclean and carter now on third down and seven from the 39. Carter and Holloway are right. McLean is left. Now Carter in motion. McLean's all by himself out here. A bear to Carter. He's got it. First down inside the 30. Tackle made by Reed. There's that 10 to 15 yard pattern again. If you're going to throw against the defense going in, throw it into the middle of the field. Anthony Carter comes out, but also Lacey goes out of the backfield. It opens it up. Now they got to put one-on-one -on, -one on Anthony Carter, and that's Reed coming up to make the tackle because, you know, you give him some running room, and Anthony Carter is gone. But if you're going to throw against the defense, Anthony's limping off, and I, I guarantee you he'll be back. But throw in the middle of the field because that's where it's open. McLean right, Holloway left. 5.38 and counting in the game. Michigan down by six. Hey Bear this time hands off to Lacey. Lacey breaks the tackle. Lacey's got a first down. Inside the 15, the market. Inside the 14 yard line. First down near the 13. Thomas ran him out of bounds. Lacey, what they call is just legging it. Take a look at Lacey. Breaks back to Dallas Hickman, 57, not making the tackle. Also, number 75, Jimmy Walker misses the tackle. Lacey goes back to the outside, picks up the first down, gets out of bounds, stops the clock, 525. Remaining. Birmingham has never trailed in this game. They've led the whole way. Lacey has now carried 14 times for 107 yards. Remember, last week he had 156 yards against New Jersey. So back-to-back 100-yard game for Ken Lacey. John Williams breaks it to the outside with Herb Spencer riding him down at about the 10-yard line. The Stallions leading 20-14, to 14 and Michigan has put together their best ride. One thing we haven't seen a bear do, and field goal really at this point, I don't think helps them that much. They are six down, two field goals to get them in the game. John Corker giving everybody a little encouragement. But we want to see a bear on any kind of a bootleg, and I think what he has to do because of Birmingham blitzing, he's got to roll out of there. He can't sit in the middle of the field. Second down and seven from the ten. goes Williams and Williams gets down near the five yard line and it is going to be third down and short McPherson made the stop and in comes some help in the way of an offensive lineman you watch Williams where he gets tackled see 55 Spencer watch where he's tackled Williams here now watch where Spencer knocks him he knocks him three more yards towards the five-yard line. He's trying to pull him back, but his momentum knocked him forward, helped him pick up another three yards. Third down, two to go for the first down, five and a half to go for the touchdown. And there's, there's the Abair, the bootleg, he can score! 
No touchdown called yet, but they got a first down. First down. Lost his helmet. Good hit just as he hit near the goal line, and it's first down and goal to go. Well, I've been looking for the bootleg, and Hebert can run the football. Here it comes. Hebert gets back to the outside. This is a naked bootleg. There's nobody out there blocking for him. Hebert breaks it back to the inside. Oh, my. Hey, he oh, look, a touchdown. He scored. The ball he is scored. on the goal line. He scored. There's the old break the plane again, Jim. Second man through, Williams, touchdown. John Williams scores his eighth touchdown rushing of the year. It's a tie game. It took the officials a little bit of time in order to raise their arms, but here comes Williams coming right at you. The ball breaking the play, there was no question about it being over the goal line. It is a touchdown. Of course, Hebert had to touch down the play before, but they had a chance to run off some of the clock. And now to put him ahead, Boyovic comes out. The kick is blocked, it's a tie game. Boyovic didn't get it up. 2.52 to go. It's 20 all. Two fifty-two left. This is going to be Grandjean for his second kickoff return of the night. Grandjean, running with the football, gets across the thirty-yard line. First and ten, the Stadions from the thirty-four-yard line. Two minutes forty-one seconds on the clock. All right, Jim Simpson, I want you to do me one favor. Give me that statement you said before the game started. I think I, well, I know what I said. I said, they say anticipation is greater than satisfaction. I hope that is not so tonight. <laughs> what a game. What a game. Straight ahead goes Talton, taking the ball across the 40-yard line from the 34. Pickup of seven, and it'll be second down and three. Pennywell again on the stop. And listen, in a 20-all ball game, who's to say that Paul and I have any idea who the men in MVP is at this point let's wait a little while because it's so close on both sides offensively and defensively it probably will come down to who wins this thing and if somebody wins this game if 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 second down and short Tallman again Tallman's got the first down that's Borland most in motion there Ron or uh, in evidence Ron Osborne also in the tackle Two minutes to go. Jim, I would normally say a team like Birmingham, who, who primarily they run the football, would be at a disadvantage. But in the USFL, let me remind people that don't realize this, that inside of two minutes, the clock stops after every first down. So that puts the advantage in their favor. A strong running team, first downs will stop the clock and they can line up again. Three wide receivers on first down for Birmingham. And Lane back to throw. Looking out here for Mason, and the ball is broken up by Chapman. Second down, and Clarence almost had the interception. Flag down, and it's in the backfield of Birmingham, and they're going to be called with holding. So one of the reasons why Clarence Chapman didn't intercept that ball is because he waited on the ball. Instead of going up and attacking the football, he waited for the ball to come down to him. Had he gone up for the ball, he would have been able to pick it off and he'd have been gone. They'll mark off this penalty for holding of 10 yards and make it second down and 20 from the 38. I think I read his lips to be 59, Battaglia, the right guard. Did I read his lips right? 59. All right, we'll just take a look at the left guard, Battaglia. And is he the man that's holding? Yeah, he dragged the man to the ground. And the man he dragged down was Alan Hughes, number 98. So Lester Moyes in the game. 
Well, there goes Talden, and Corker was on a blitz and had to peel back. Corker was teeing off on the quarterback, Bob Lane. Talden, that should put him over 100 yards now. Pennywell again made the tackle. Time is called by Birmingham. 144 left in the game. And because of a mixed extra point, it is 20 apiece. You can hear Bobby Hebert say we're going to get him. It's 20 all now, though, and it's second down and 15 to go. Monday Night Football, the USFL live on ESPN. <laughs> We've got one. There's Lane looking for Smith, who comes back and makes the catch at the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and three and a half from there. Pennywell was on top of Smith, but it is third and short. At one time, it was first and 20. Jim, isn't it amazing that the guy that everybody knows you're going to throw the ball to, Jim Smith, number 86, and he can still get open. He has a linebacker, Pennywell, number 59, coming out to help out. Clarence Chapman knows that his man is going to be catching the ball. But Clarence Chapman that time played way off because it was, it was second down and long. But Smith, that's the first time he didn't get beyond the first down marker, but he couldn't. He didn't have time. One minute and five seconds and counting to go in this game. Third down and three. And here's Quarles, and Quarles has the first down to the 41. Now that will stop the clock with 57 seconds to go until they move the sticks. And once the sticks are moved, then they'll start them again. Quarles, number 40. Cornelius Quarles goes, goes back to the inside. This was just an off-tackle play all the way. Greenwood, the safety, is up there making the tackle. You don't want to run right now against Michigan right up the middle. If you're going to run anywhere, you want to run to the outside or throw back into the middle of the field. Remember, Norwood is an outstanding field goal kicker if they can get within range of this last 57 seconds. Lane has time. Goes down the sidelines. Look out. The ball is broken up on a fine play by Logan. And they say he's got it. Wait a minute. He threw the ball away. They didn't throw the ball away. The end the and Mason throws on it. And the whistle blown. Touchdown. Logan threw it away in the end zone. And Mason picks it up. What a boner. What a boner. Logan intercepted so happy. He threw the ball down in the end zone with 35 seconds to go. And Mason, keeping his wits about him, knowing the ball was alive, jumped on it. Oh, Jim, well, I tell you, Logan had the ball. Apparently, no one had touched him. He is free to get up and run the ball. He did not get out of bounds. Then he ran around back into the end zone. Now, the ball is still alive. He took the ball, and he spiked it. You can take all your spikes and splits and jumps and flips and throw them out the window. This well, he'll, forget, he'll remember the rest of his life, and I guarantee he'll never do it again. And I guarantee you he will see it over and over again on nearly every USFL program, every sports program, on all the networks and all the local stations around the country. Logan, a rookie out of Cincinnati, starting tonight, he'd been on the bench, made the interception, dances into the end zone, end zone throws it down, Mason realizes it is a live ball and jumps on it for the touchdown. And what the official is explaining to him is he was never down. Now, if he goes into the end zone, it's just like a man on a kickoff return. If he's on the one-yard line and he goes back into the end zone, he, when he goes back into the end zone, that is a safety. He has got to bring the ball out. He was outside of the end zone, went back in, spiked the ball. All right, let's take a look at it. Bob Lane goes down, and goes out, and throws the ball deep. Now, Logan's going to make the interception right here. Take a look at Logan. He is not touched by anyone. His feet are not out of bounds. He can get up. The official marks the ball at the one-yard line. He's up. Now he's running around the end zone. He is still alive with the ball. But look at him chasing there. There's a man trying, Frederick, it looked like, trying to make the tackle, realizing what was going on. No, they oh, don't. Look, they changed it. Now, Birmingham goes wild. And Dutch is calling for the official. They changed it at least three minutes after it happened. Jim, you can't take a ball outside the play, in, in the playing field, take it in the end zone, and bury the ball. That ball is still live. Look at Raleigh Dodge. He's out in the middle of the field on a goal line. He's going to suit up. Cannot believe it. Well, it's not over, as Yogi said, till it's all over. Moving. 
Fred Logan has been saved from embarrassment by an official ruling that he, I don't know, that he must have stepped out of bounds or something. All right, Bob Lane's going to just lay the ball out for Frederick down the sideline. Logan, number 24, is going to intercept the ball. Now, just remember one thing. He is still in the playing field. Watch the official mark the spot. He has marked the spot. He's not calling anything. The play has not stopped. Logan has got to bring the ball back out again. He gets hit by Frederick from behind. Mason falls on the ball. It should be a touchdown, Birmingham. The only thing I saw, Logan's foot hit the white once he got into the end zone, which might have marked him out of the end zone. Let's, let's try that one more time. If he did mark it out of the end zone, Jim, why would they get the ball on the one-yard line? You can't do that either. I know. It'd have to come out to the 20. Bear's going to run this down if they can. Let's take another look. Remembering, watch his foot once he gets in the end zone, but if that's the case, he's got to come out to the 20. Here we go. Take a look at it. Now, he's rolling here. His, line to, his, his foot does not hit the outside. It's, it's up in the air, Jim. He's, he's bringing it over. Now he's showing he's everybody. Play. Now watch all of the people react to him, meaning Birmingham, because they realize the ball is alive. See? That was Frederick hitting him, realizing the ball was alive, and Mason knew the ball was alive, and he pounces on it. Michigan knew it, too. They wouldn't be going after it if they didn't. However, 28 seconds to go. Looks like we're going to have an overtime, barring some kind of safety or something. But mark this down in your book. Ha! <laughs> It has been something. Time is out on the field. 28 seconds to go. In a ball game that pits one team with six consecutive wins, the other with four, and Logan still must be, a, he must still be in a matter of shell shock. You, but think, at least, he'll, you think he'll ever burn a ball again? <laughs> Stand by, there is overtime in the USFL, and it looks like we're staring one in the face, barring some kind of safety or remarkable turnover here. Stevens in motion, and Williams gets a yard or two, and they're going to blow the whistle again. 20 seconds, time. That's Birmingham's last time out. So they can't stop it anymore, and they'll be able to run the clock out, and that's what Michigan wanted to do. You know what I'm thinking of after that call? I'm thinking of the last time you and I on a Monday night had our overtime was in Chicago, and that is where Keith Moody did not make the call that the official said he did make, and they gave the ball to him, and Stan White came after him calling him your Christian cheat, but Chicago went on to win anyway. This, this has been a Monday night series to remember. You know, it is a shame that one of these teams has to lose, but I think the game was just stolen away from Raleigh Dodge in Birmingham. You know, when you take a look down the, the list, the team that most, that could afford most to lose it is Michigan. Although, once you drop out with Chicago ahead of you, that's something in Tampa would be two games ahead of you. But for Birmingham to lose and drop three games back to Tampa, that could be nearly disastrous for Birmingham, even though, as we say, down the line, they get their shots at Tampa Bay. They control, you know, both these teams, really, they can't look for help from anyone. They control their own destiny. Third down, 20 seconds to go. You think Bear will drop on the ball. He's all right there. Nobody can stop it now. They're running down, and Paul and I are, for the second time on our Monday night coverage, are going to face another overtime. All right about this one, no matter who wins, win, lose, or draw, this has been one of the most often used word incredible finishes I think I've ever seen in football, that a touchdown so signaled by many officials is taken away minutes later after a consultation in the end zone. There's and only, marked at the one. There's only one man that you can consult, and that's the guy to call the play. Well, I'm wondering, Paul, as we wait for the toss of the corner, if they were wondering that the receiver on the play might have because that's the only call they could say touched Logan and that's why he went down at the one and that's why they marked it at the one that's the only way the ball could be put at the one yard line that the receiver on the ball touched Logan after the interception which I don't think happened but that's the only way they could mark the ball at the one he couldn't have touched him because Frederick was on his way out of the end zone in fact it took him a long time to get back to Logan well, now let us go out for the torn, uh, the torn. Hey, here we go, Gentlemen, he's calling them gentlemen. Hey, this is it. We're missing team. What are you going to call? Yes. Yeah. Get away. Get away. It's a 
I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. We begin the overtime, and I'm sure you know that whoever scores first, that is the ball game. They do not play a full 15 minutes unless there is no score, at which time we may have something else unusual in the USFL. And at this point, there is absolutely no love loss between these two teams. And to be honest with you, James, I would not like to be down there. Norwood to kick off. This is going to be Stelly with the ball at the 10. Stelly in a mess. It does not make it out to the 20 yard line. Tackled by Freddie Smith and Jackie Klein. All right, let's go back to it again. The other question that you brought up, Jim, did Frederick touch Logan on the way down? Here is the interception. Frederick is there. He's going by. They're both going for the ball. Now, Frederick is gone. He, he's into the end zone. He caught the ball. Now he's back up there. Look at the official. That's where you got to keep an eye on. It's still in play. Logan gets the ball. He catches it. He falls at the four-yard line. Now, if he's going to be anywhere, it's at the four-yard line, not at the one-yard line. That's what they say is past history, but nobody will let that die in a hurry, I guarantee it. Hebert back to throw as though he's got not much time. Goes to Holloway. Can't hold on to the football at the 32. Over there defending is Michael Thomas. Second down. Hebert went for a lot in a hurry. It is 20 all. Can anybody remember such things as Anthony Carter catching an 81-yard touchdown pass? Anthony Carter dropping a punt that set up a score by Michigan? All seems like a long time ago. What does not seem so long ago, Boyevich not getting the extra point up and having it 20 to 20 instead of 21 to 20. And don't forget your tight end, Mr. Hebert. Second down. Hebert puts it out and puts it out to Lacey. And Lacey is down across the 40-yard line to the 41. Tackled by Billy Caesar. A definite mix-up of the defense because Lacey goes out of the backfield and take a look. There is nobody on him. Thomas comes up to make the play. He gets a little help from one of his friends, Billy Caesar. But the linebacker that was supposed to be on him or the safety, whoever it might have been, was not there. Ball at the 41. Holloway and Carter both wide to the right. Carter in motion. Hebert gets the ball out again. Lacey out of the backfield. And Lacey picks up eight or nine more. Hanging on is Rick D'Amico. They're just taking Lacey, number 28, out of the backfield. A little play action pass to the backside to Williams. And Lacey is there. D'Amico, number 53, is the linebacker. And he's covering the back. That's tough coverage. There is Alfred Taubman. Now we understand that Cal Lepore, the head of officials, is listening on the radio in the New York area. And Cal Lepore called it interception momentum taking it out to three, but they didn't take it out to the three. They took it to the one. From the 49-yard line, second down. The ball is loose. And they say it was down. Spencer. Now again, Cal Lepore is saying that the momentum of Logan taking him into the end zone, that was it. That's a touchback. And so, okay, we buy that. But the point was that that was at the four, as Paul pointed out, and they brought it out to the one. But momentum into the end zone, I would think you would come out to the 20. But can't you get up and run with the ball? I think so. And that's exactly what Logan did. He got up and ran with the football. Okay. 
Okay, now we understand that it is from the spot of where the momentum started at the three, but again, they spotted it at the one, not the three. So we're splitting heads, but now we know the ruling. Momentum into the end zone. They're going to put it to him where they figured he started from his momentum. Flag goes down, and I think that Bear had used too much of the clock. It'll be delay of game. Instead of third and short, it's going to be third and about eight. Jim, Birmingham knows now on, on third down and about seven yards to go that Michigan's going to throw the football. They are just going to tee off and fly. Somebody has to cover Lacey coming out of the backfield. You want to hear something else? One person has told us the receiver touched the defender on the one-yard line. That's why they called it down there. That's Hold wrong. it. Someone else has said the man was touching the end zone. It should have been a two-point safety. <laughs> Well, he wasn't, he wasn't knocked down. He wasn't uh, tackled in the right. end zone. The ball, he hit the ball away. All kinds of opinions, but momentum into the end zone. Hey there, oh, does he get a hit at almost the interception opportunity by Frank Reed. But the ball was behind him at its fourth down, and Birmingham will get the ball away. Hey there is upset, and he's lucky to get back up because he gets hammered. The defensive line, they are just teeing off on the outside. Dallas Hickman's coming in. Take a look at Reigns is coming in. Number 79, 98 is Klein. But oh, the ball is over the head of Partridge. Can he get it away? He's going to throw a pass. And it is caught across the way, and the flag goes down. Well, the flag goes down because the illegal man beyond the line is scrimmage. That's the reason for that. But Partridge did a great job just getting the ball thrown. We have seen everything <laughs> in this game tonight. I think it was Chapman who caught the ball, a defensive back. And what it means is, because it means that Birmingham's going to have the ball and very little yardage to get to give Mr. Norwood a shot. Well, when you have illegal receivers downfield, that's also a loss of down. So it will be Birmingham's ball. Here oh. comes Tom White again. You know, in all of this, and I don't mean to take the heat off anybody or put the heat on anybody, and we have heard from Cal Lepore, the head of the officials, but the point is when they replay that and see all those hands going up from all those officials signaling touchdown when Logan spiked the ball, well, it's, it's something. Yeah, here he makes it just down. the loss, the loss of down. There's sure. a penalty, the loss of down, and Birmingham has the ball. At the 34. There wasn't just one guy. You know, everybody's on the punt. They're getting ready to go. They're moving on down the field. You can't blame the, the offensive line at that point, but I give credit to Partridge on that, on that play just getting the ball off. All right, from a 34-yard line. Game has had everything. We're in overtime now. It's tied at 20 all. Gant with Hughes hanging on to him. Jim, it is getting mean. Down there. It is getting mean. Very, very mean. On the 32 yard line. First team to score. Point out again that they're both in the Central Division. Michigan seven and four starting the night on a six game winning streak. Birmingham six and five on the night. Four game winning streak. Both trying for at least a wild card spot on the Central Division. And now time is called by Bob Lane as he takes time out on second down and eight to go. They only get two timeouts in, in the overtime period. Now Birmingham has used one. They only have one left. Scott Norwood, the field goal kicker. He's walking around the sidelines all by himself. The loneliest man in the ballpark right now because it, it could come down to him. From this point, he would be kicking about a 48-yard field goal. Between the 40 and 49, Norwood is only two of six. He's never hit one of over, or nor has he tried one of over 50 yards. And I think you'll recall earlier that he tried one a better than 40 yards and the ball hardly made it to the end zone so he would like a lot more yardage between himself and the goal line before they leave it up to him 
both these teams are going to remember this football game, especially the winner and the loser. <laughs> But, you know, it's so so hard fought, Jim, and we knew it was going to be this kind of a game. Yeah, you but, got... Paul, how often do you come on the air thinking it's going to be that kind of game? And even by the other left and the rest of them on the sidelines were saying it's going to be that kind of game. And then someone wins going away. Such has not been the case. The biggest thing is that Birmingham led most of the way at a 20-7 lead before it became 20-14, then 20-20 when Boyevich's extra point was missed. Second down and long, about eight. Lane dumps it out to Claus, and Lloyd makes the stop. Inside the 40-yard line. Check that inside the 30-yard line, and they're going to bring it back. Because they said that when Lloyd made the stop, Quarles lost the football. Michigan's defense are doing the same thing that Birmingham did to them. They're blitzing on every down, and that time Lane rolled out and rolled right into Borland number 52 and he had to dump the ball sooner than he wanted to and here's the guy that's it's all by himself doesn't want anybody to talk to him he knows what his job is he's got to get it between the upright he would like some more yardage and lane's going to try to get it now on third down and eight gives the ball and straight ahead goes Colton inside the 30 and it's fourth down and tipton is having a tough time getting up helped up by the veteran tom banks now, here comes Norwood. 45-yard field goal. And the reason you can say that, folks, if you don't know already, is that the kicker always, or the holder lines up seven yards from the center. I don't know who started that first, but that's the way it is, and that's how it happens. And this will be, he's going to be just over 45, close to 46 yards. He is hit on two out of nine from here. 49 yards out. The kick is up. The kick is go! game is over. Birmingham wins. Scott Norwood. Rowdy Dolch out. What a ball game in overtime. 23 to 20. Birmingham is now 7 and 5 and so is Michigan. Our final score from the Silverdome in overtime. Birmingham Stallions 23. The Michigan Panthers 20. For Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire, I'm Tom Mees. Good night everyone.